the Elden Ring lawsuit, it's not what you think it is. Everyone has come to the conclusion this guy is just unable to breach through the barrier of entry when it comes to the new Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. I hate to say this, but the reality is far worse. Are you about to tell me that he's secretly actually really good at Dark Souls? But... Arguably, he's a lot better than most people when it comes to Dark Souls. It, he has been obsessing over the Soul series since Demon Souls, from what I've been able to find. Giant disclaimer before I go into this, by the way, when it comes to the, a lot of these court cases, I have censored out his name. Leave this guy alone. He is very, very mentally ill. This lawsuit is really the only thing he has done where he's kind of like gone out and tried to like make some sort of change this court case has the potential to go on for a very very long time because my guess is he's going to just be throwing out just random legal claims and just keep extending this you know as skippy did the last time the uh longest court case in american history is there a chance that this becomes the new longest court case no in not a chance no <laughs> no if it goes on until like june i will be genuinely surprised He's suing by himself on this. He doesn't have any lawyers with him. He's actually been paying someone online to give him legal advice. I've sort of been talking about him now. I haven't really even talked about what kind of person is and what he believes in. And what he believes in is what's driving this case. I'm going to be using the name that he gives himself online, Nora Kisaragi. No Nora believes a concept called rebirth space spirituality. With this comes the concept that practically every aspect of your body is controlled by some sort of spirit. Specifically, the words that are coming out of my mouth, the words that have been coming out of all of your mouths has not been your own voice. The spirit that controls your voice, he has given the name of Bates. Bates being the antagonist in Clock Tower 2 on the PlayStation 1. A lot of his stuff, you can kind of point to different media and say this is where he got the idea for this. Bates specifically in this game is someone who controls the protagonist and makes them do evil stuff. I, I just remember Clock Tower like as my probably first horror game I've ever played. The Scissor Man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The Scissor Man. Yeah, yeah. And so the fact that like someone could develop a whole religion base on a fucking game that I played when I was like seven. It, it's more. It's more of a hodgepodge of just different media that he's just sort of taking everything from. The issue that he's been having with some of the spirits that are sort of like trying to take control of him is they keep doing muscle spasms in his middle finger to flip him off. So in his tutorials, which kind of goes over his whole religion and how he views the world, he has a six part series, which is which are all unlisted videos. These videos at most, I think the first video has like 300 views. And then the last video in the tutorial has maybe 16. And it has nothing to do with games. All of this stuff you need to understand before we get into the game aspect of this. This mouth spirit apparently is supposed to be on your side and is your best friend. He is the one that's supposed to be sort of trying to give you the best outcome when you die. The goal of this is to be reborn in a way that you want exactly. How Nora wants to be reborn is as a non-religious Japanese citizen. What you need to do is you need to search for these things called promises. Promises are things that you find in different types of media. In his case, he has found promises in modern Japanese media. And he spent minutes stressing this, that it must be modern. <laughs> Every day we were reminded that anime was a mistake. I guess the Holy Orchestra is a band by the name of Flipside. And he linked a bunch of his music that apparently contained these promises. I didn't hear it. If anyone <laughs> else hears it, please let me know. He went from Shinto to Buddhism recently. I thought he wasn't supposed to be religious. That's what I found that changed everything. <laughs> he has a big bone to pick with Christianity because Christianity doesn't have reincarnation in their religion. So what's supposed to happen when you die is that you have to go to a trial. Your best friend Bates will be there behind your back representing you the entire way a lot of the spirits uh that go into your body that sort of affect you are just spirits that are trying to like coerce you to go other ways i mentioned again that now he is sort of following religions so he's following right now shintoism and a specific branch of buddhism i found a post that says specifically the reason why he worships it is because the supreme goddess in that 
is an anime goddess. Space take. <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome take. Oh my god is an anime waifu. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. The official Surf Swag Academy Discord for members only is officially online. This will be a server primarily designed for people to share their own stories with each other, as well as to get into contact with us. The $10 Teacher's Pet tier is also now live. The Teacher's Pet will be able to listen in on our Surf Swag Academy recording sessions live in the Discord server, and they will also have priority replies in YouTube comments and the live chat. Josh Link Watson, once again on Team Boat, can your plane or tank shoot Sudan-sized rounds like the USS Texas also ships came first? <laughs> The $10 Teacher's Pet tier will also have access to special artwork created for the channel by Skipty and Max. And as always, thanks for watching. So now that you understand all of that, we can get into what he is trying to achieve in the lawsuit. So in the tutorial, he mentions only twice the concept of world flipping. It allows you to switch positions with someone else of a parallel world. What he is suggesting is that Bandai Namco and others in Japan have found a way to open up a gateway and peer into these worlds, which is how they've been getting inspiration for their games. I've heard of games being called otherworldly before, but this is not what I thought it meant. On the 2nd of September, he actually made another post on one form, which kind of outlined specifically what he wanted. And I'll just read this verbatim because it's amazing. There is a magic portal that takes you to the other half. It's called switching positions. It's crazy hard to do. And above all, there are only four people in Japan that have done it. Because they did it, they attained the ability to control Japan. They control all Japan media. Just four people. If a Westerner were to breach that barrier, they might end the dream altogether. When you breach the barrier, you get a wish granted. Japanese music encourages people to do it, and many people have died in pursuit of this power. Now, I know what you might be asking yourself. Who are these four people? Yoko Toro, Hideo Kojima, Miyazaki, and Toshiba Mechimori. I knew that Hideo Kojima would be on there. He's only really trying to get $5,000. Like, this is a small claims court, so the most he could possibly get out of this is $5,000. Scorch Knight was actually able to interview the guy prior to him going into his lawsuit, asking him exactly what he was trying to aim for. All he wants is for Bandai Namco to just tell him how they're doing it. How are they opening up the portals? Not a lot of people know this, but I think it was around 2015 or 2016. If you had a Google account, you automatically were given a YouTube account and it would always default to your full legal name. So a lot of people have youtube accounts that they have just unknowingly been posting to just with their name and don't know that people just can look up your name and find all all this stuff on those channels it's not just from soft games that he's interested in he has a bunch of visual novel games like from the fate series uh, he had a Yu-Gi-Oh game sonic adventure 2 assassin's creed for some reason he tried to breach the bounds of that to figure out what's going on you know how like studios when they're making a game they'll do like behind the scenes and they'll show shots of like the game developer is working on some asset or whatever we like bring him into a studio in japan and we like film this as like a documentary where he gets to see the next uh souls game and him coming to terms of reality <laughs> reality would bounce off of this person i think that it's this is a, a issue that requires therapy and medication no i'm funding this trip i'm i'm gonna if if, he, if he's watching i will fund this trip for him the more you research into this guy because you can find out a lot about him the more you just feel really really bad for him there are people that obviously have called him out they just call him crazy and stuff like that but then he always responds with even more delusions he also has a claim that he has a connection in fromsoft that has been confirming everything that he's saying but he obviously hasn't named the guy either way i'm i'm very excited to see if the other parallel worlds exist and if we can get more content out of dark souls Bloodborne and all the other Souls games. What do you mean if? I'm excited to know how from Soft is doing it, honestly. What if it's me looking down on me? The world above must also be. This could go on for infinity.